What is going on friends and welcome back to the Minecraft Hub channel. Today we are checking out Mega Base progress on Hermitcraft Season 8 again and so much has been done since the last time we checked in on them. If you guys enjoy this video be sure to drop a like on it and if you're new to our channel hit that subscribe button as well and check out the rest of our content. Let's jump right into today's video. So first up today we are checking out Doc M77 and Rindog. So they made a deal that for this octagon mega shop that they are building, they are actually going to build half of it each. Doc M took this way too literally and built exactly half of the base and then left Ren to finish off the second half of the base. Not only was this hilarious, but I think it also actually made the work pretty even for what they actually had to do to get this thing complete. This octagon shop is where they'll be selling everything that they are producing from all their farms that they have been working on throughout the season. I absolutely love the design of this build and how it turned out looking in the end. You don't see too many octagons in Minecraft, especially not ones on legs that are pretending to be walking across the server. Next up we are checking out False Symmetry who, as we know before, built the floating island with the eagle pulling it by a giant chain, but this floating island is actually the reveal of False Caverns, which down here is where she's working on her actual base. Down here so far she's done her storage room and a few other portions and it's coming along really nicely. I really like the look of this and she's been digging out whole areas to fill with moss and make look really cool. I'm loving all the detail that she's putting into this build. I definitely can't wait for her to finish up the interior, which is definitely going to take a while considering the scale of this project. She has to dig everything out and then replace it with blocks that she likes. She's also doing a huge cavern, which will be covered by glass. And then of course she has to make the entrance look cool with different types of trees that she's building herself. So it's definitely a huge project, but it's coming along very nicely so far. Next up, Gemini Tay has worked on a new part of her base which will supply her food for the season. What she has been doing recently is been killing cows for the actual beef, but she's decided that she doesn't really want to do that anymore, especially this far along into the season, so she built a whole portion of her base to take care of all her food needs for the rest of the season. Definitely a beautiful addition to the rest of her mega base. Next up, Green has been working a lot on Diagon Alley. Recently, he built up Green God's Bank, which actually required him to clear a huge section of water from the back area where he actually needed to build. This build was extremely interesting because of the way that he had to offset blocks on each layer to actually make it look like it was waving back and forth. The top and the bottom are actually identical, but because the middle sections are offset by one or two blocks, it gives it an appearance that it's tilting. He also started work on the interiors of the buildings in Diagon Alley. He did the first one in his last episode, and this is the magical Mabajri, as Scar would call it. And this building he actually is going to fill with all the magical creatures in Minecraft, and with some help from Scar, he actually got a supercharged creeper into the bottom, and then went ahead and filled the rest in with phantom bees, inner mites, a brown mushroom, skeleton horse, and a lot more throughout this whole build. I'm definitely excited to see what he decides to do in the rest of his shops. Next up, we're looking at Zumavoid, who has been doing a lot of work to get more diamonds and to sell more derp coin. This is the staking building that he has been working on. He made the entire thing look like a cave entrance. And basically what can happen is people can buy stake in derp coin and it'll actually produce more derp coin for them in the long run. So this is basically an investment for them and also a way for him to get a lot more diamonds. He's also of course been working on his actual base and all the buildings that he has going on over here. The uh, villager trading hall is still in progress, but over here he actually has finished up the whole farming building. He has the nether wart down here and then berries and things like that on the top floor. Next up we are checking out Hypno who has been working on the interior of his mushroom, adding more layers so that he has a lot more room to work with. Recently he's been working on the storage room layer of this build and everything is looking extremely cool so far. I love the interior that he's doing on this mushroom with all the azalea uh, leaves, the regular leaves, the glow berries and everything. It's definitely looking extremely cool. The vines hiding all the layers, definitely a very cool look so far. I love the natural feel of this interior and I really can't wait to see the final product of it later this season. 
Ijevan has made tons of progress since the last time we checked in on the Hermits. He has covered the walls with deep slate, stone, cobblestone, and so much more to give it a lot of variety and detail, and I think it looks absolutely incredible. He has also been working on some towers that go around the edges and all come in on the center where he has his enchanting section. This project is absolutely massive. He's done a great job with the details so far using a bunch of different varieties of stone and some deep slate, of course. He's got the lights spread around, not in a symmetrical way, so it all looks super nice. I'm really liking this build so far and I really can't wait to see the final product of it. He's also been working on the swamp around, making it super magical by adding in drip leaf, moss, and so much more to make it look really incredible. Impulse has been doing a ton of work not only on farms to produce a lot of different materials, but also on the interior of his base. He had already built a storage system that would sort out everything that he wanted into the chests he wanted, but he decided he didn't really want to use that system, so he completely tore down all the redstone that he put in and built a whole new system, which he actually prefers. This system completely changes up how it actually sorts items and makes it a little bit easier to sort things into the same chest, so it's definitely an interesting system and I hope it was worth all the redstone effort he put into building this. Next up, Joe Hills and Zombie Cleo have been doing a ton of work on their joint project, which is this castle. Zombie Cleo did the walls of the project and left Joe Hills to do the roof, which he actually had to make some changes to the walls in order to get the angles of the roof right. He also had to go and collect a bunch of wheat to make hay bales as a floor underneath the roof since he kept falling and taking a lot of fall damage from it. So far, I'm really liking all the blocks that are going into this build. It's definitely a very interesting variety with the sandstone and then the stripped wood. I love the deep slate on top though. It's a very nice contrast and it's a super cool build so far. I definitely can't wait for them to finish up the other section of it. Next up, Perlescent Moon has done a ton of work on top of her mountain. She built up a massive stone structure of what her base would actually look like, and then in her last episode she actually went through and filled it in with all the colors that she's going to add into it. So it's still kind of a base design and she still has a lot of details and some coloring to do on it, but so far I think it is looking absolutely incredible. Next up, Scar has finally started work on his portion of the Gigabase, and of course, in Scar fashion, it is looking incredible so far. He's done an absolute ton of work doing a huge mountain terraforming project. The mountains, of course, are looking a bit different than Mumbo's and Grian's, and he's left it up the, to them to actually combine their bases into his by putting red lines down where he actually wants them to build now. Since they wrote him messages in the sky, he left them red lines as well. This terraforming project is absolutely massive and he still has a lot of work to do. This is all floating up in the sky above Green's base right now, but he's going to let Green finish up his part of the base and then Scar will actually take his down all the way to the ground. Scar said in his video that this terraforming project actually took him three and a half days to complete, so it's definitely a ton of work, and he's only done stone so far. So he actually still has to go back and add all the details and things that he wants in this build to give it a lot of variety and depth, but hopefully he'll do that in one of his next episodes. Here we can actually see the pretty much final product of the top of these mountains and you can see that the render distance is actually not even able to encompass them so it is definitely a massive build and I really can't wait for Mumbo and Grian and Pearl to combine their builds and do his. Next up Stress Monster has finally made her return to Hermitcraft and should be back for good. It is very exciting to see that she is back and building on the server and one of the first projects she undertook was actually building a nether portal for the whole of the swamp biome to use. This nether portal looks extremely cool and she built it on top of the mound, so it's definitely a nice project for her to get back into things on the Hermitcraft server. Obviously Stress Monster has not started her mega base yet if she decides to build one, but I am very excited to see what else she decides to build on this season because she is such a great builder and does a lot of detail work that I really enjoy looking at. Next up, Tango Tech is back as well after a move in real life. He has got his PC set back up so he can start recording Hermitcraft videos again. 
The first project he decided to do was actually a community project, a game that people can enjoy, and it is this ice rink. Of course, this isn't really an ice rink, it is filled with powdered snow, and also the players will be in boats that have zombies on the back, and they have to compete to the death with the other player in order to survive the longest. This is definitely a super interesting game, and it was great seeing him and Grian test it, and he of course did it in a very fashionable design by building a whole carnival tent above it and adding in a ton of details on the inside to make it look super nice and like a true carnival game. It'll definitely be hilarious to see some of the other hermits testing this out later on, and it was already great seeing him and Green go for it as well. Next up we're checking out Vintage Beef and looking at the inside of this UFO. He's been working on some of the rooms in here and everything is looking extremely cool. I love the design of this UFO and how you actually have to be able to navigate it. He himself is still learning a little bit, but of course everything is looking like a true UFO would. The storage room is actually just a pile of different uh, shulker boxes, which I think is great. It definitely relates more to a UFO than just having a random room full of chess. The outside of this UFO and the land underneath is still one of my favorite things on the server. It looks so cool and is definitely a super fun design. He's also been working with Suma and created a shop over in Evil Suma's area, so it's definitely shaping up to be a super interesting season for Vintage Beef. Next up we are checking out XB Crafted, who has been doing a lot of work on his shopping area where he works with Hypno on Horsehead Farms. And this whole area he's been trying to improve to sell more to the other hermits as well. Him and Hypno also just did an IOU auction where they had collected IOUs and then auctioned them off to every other hermit. Zombie Cleo and Joe Hills actually bought seven of those IOUs and some of the other ones were Impulse got Tango Tech and B00 got Impulse. So definitely a lot of interesting things going to be happen once Hermits decide to start using those IOUs. But this whole area is definitely looking extremely cool now and I would definitely want to go shop there as well. But of course there is a lot of competition as far as shopping goes on the Hermitcraft server and B00 himself has been doing a lot of work to try to encourage Hermits to come to the Big Eyes shopping district. He actually just built a shop in his most recent episode that is going to be selling bookshelves once he figures out the best way to start acquiring those. So far he's decided he doesn't want to go through the process of actually getting leather and paper so he's decided to try to do some villager trading but the villagers he was actually using sold them at too high of a price and it was taking him a long time to actually get those bookshelves. I'm really loving the aesthetic that these guys are going for over in the Big Eye Shopping District, all these little Italian buildings, and as you can see, since they have so much more set up, there is going to be a lot of them by the end of the season. It's definitely going to be a very cool district to come shop in, and hopefully they can keep enticing the other hermits to actually come to this area. So far, the only shop that has actually been selling over here is Tango Tech's Big Eye Ron Shop, which of course sells iron from his iron farm. Next up we are checking out Cupfan who has been doing a lot of work on extending the dripstone canyons. He's filled in the floors with raw iron ore blocks which I think is extremely expensive but fortunately he got some donated from iJevin. This whole area is absolutely massive and I really can't wait to see him extend everything else that he's doing especially the dripstone onto all these other blocks. Definitely shaping up to be a super interesting looking canyon and it's gonna be absolutely huge once the whole thing is complete. He's also filled in some of the bottom with uh, rooted dirt, which he decided to make a farm for as well in one of his latest episodes, and he actually converts stone into rooted dirt, which I think is super interesting that you can do in the 1.17 update. Because stone can be converted into moss, and moss can be converted into dirt by growing an azalea tree on it, you can basically create a way of creating, turning stone into dirt infinitely. And I think this is actually a super interesting process and a great update to Minecraft in the 1.17 update. Last but definitely not least today, Mumbo Jumbo has finally finished the armchair by putting a back onto it. And it's taken a long time for him or any of the hermits to actually put a back onto their base, but he is one of the first to do it and it looks super good. He terraformed the whole thing with stone and then of course went across it with moss adding in all those details to make it look like the true armchair it is. 
He of course left the top open because he's planning on putting a lake up there so that the waterfall actually has a source for which it comes from. He'll of course have to extend his base over to where Scars is later on, but that is for a later day. That is all that we have for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like on it, and if you're new to our channel, hit that subscribe button as well. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.